technology. And this was a mock-up that um, I originally made. And so for my first AR experience, I created an interactive immersive um, game in the French Quarter called Where's the King Cake Baby, where it would be featuring location-based AR, where you get to um, use a geolocation, things like Snapchat, and be able to play games and find the King Cake Baby. And um, the beignets there are 3D scanned that I did myself. Unfortunately, king cakes were out of season. And then um, I hope y'all are eating crawfish this spring. If not, um, here is a how to boil crawfish AR experience that we can have at the cookout or just at a small little museum game. And yes, it's an instructional experience. And for my last one, it is a 3D scan food presentation that would be used for an AR menu because, you know, there's already QR codes at most of these restaurants, so might as well pull out the iPad for the iPad kids and let them play with their food before um, their first bite of food. So I believe um, we are not only revolutionizing tourism as well as transforming the way you experience a city's culture, by falling in love with its cuisine before your first bite. So yes. Yeah. There we go, Ella. All right, I'm Ella Bellhoff, and my project is Buoy, a search and rescue water app. So everyone around here, if you grew up around here, you're no strangers to floods and hurricanes and stuff. And when those things happen, you know that 911 and emergency services can't get to everybody, so it's up to the community to help rescue people. Um, and so my solution to that is to create an app where uh, people who need to be rescued can get in contact with people who have boats, trucks, and stuff, and who are willing to help rescue people in these disaster circumstances. And it will also connect these people um, who are who can rescue to the people who need to be rescued. Um, here's my inspiration. I looked at a bunch of apps with uh, weather, uh, emergency services, a walkie-talkie app, Apple's emergency SOS. And here were uh, my initial wireframes. Um, these were for the side of the app that you can get a rescue from. Uh, these were the wireframes for uh, if you're going to rescue people much more in depth and more of a traditional app structure than the rescuee side of the app. These, this was my final Figma file. Uh, last time I counted, it was 234 frames and components, um, and I added more since then. Uh, lots of lots of connections. And here are some screens from my final prototype, so if you want to mess around with it, you can come to the gallery. Um, and try it on iPad or on your own phone. So, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Mitchell and my capstone project is called Cher's Closet. It's a fashion app that's based on the famous movie Clueless that helps you organize and style your clothes. Um, my app is a fashion-focused styling app that's mainly about the Y2K aesthetic and organizing your clothes and helps people decide what they want to wear in the morning. And here are some photos from the movie. And my inspiration was one of the scenes from Clueless when she is on the computer and um, choosing her outfit. And then here are some of the looks from the movie that I was ins inspired by and that I loved. As you can see, there's a bunch of playful colors and pastel colors and plaid that I incorporated into my app. And then I started off doing a bunch of research, um, making a bunch of mood boards, and then I started off with sketches and did my wireframes on Figma. And then here's my high fidelity prototype at the bottom of the screen. And then here's just a bunch of my iterations and different font iterations and everything. And then this is my final prototype, and that's my final logo. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, hi guys, my name is Jada, and my capstone is about West African Folk Tales. So, reading, of course, is a very fundamental skill. We all need it. It's very pivotal for us in our daily lives and just going forth. So, I thought that I would challenge myself to tackle the issue of young people, particularly 10 to 12 year olds, who are not as interested in reading. So, I came across this book as I was searching for a book to use to just already revolutionize because I didn't have time to obviously make my own book. So I came across this book and it roughly had like 58 West African folk tales. So I chose eight and I just focused on really enhancing them and making them more immersive and visually appealing for said audience. Because reading should be fun, not boring. I enjoy reading and I feel like other people can too if it is done right and designed right. So, the key features for my capstone involve an AI-generated videos using the pre-existing illustrations within the book, that which you'll see as I am showing like a video of flipping through the original content that I used. And then my capstone will have some quiz elements, which after each story, it'll give you the possibility to quiz yourself to see how well you read the story and how well you comprehended it, or you can skip to the next story if you don't feel like it. And I have an AI questioning feature, which will allow the user to ask real in time questions verbally as they're going through the content. And yeah, in summary, I will be <laughs> revolutionizing the West African Folktales book into a more immersive, visually appealing content. Hello. Oh my God, loud. So I'm Ryder and my project was uh, The Mystery of Mr. Mint, which is a multimedia project that aims to... <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryder and my project <laughs> is The Mystery of Mr. Mint, which is a multimedia project um, which aims to bring social political commentary to a lore-driven narrative, um, whether that's through music, the illustration, or the interactive activity that is all packaged into this. I did a lot of music work for this, um, one of which I'm still working on for the show tomorrow, but most of the music I did is, was for the interactive activity itself, um, and the music will be released into an EP at the end, which is where the bulk of the story will be taking place. For designing the characters that are in this uh, story, it, they went through a lot of kind of different models and phases and stuff and I had to cut stuff and add more stuff and it was a bunch of fun so that's just like some sketchbook stuff I guess how many times can you say stuff um, I then proceeded to do some of the actual ink work the inks you see on the bottom are asset creation for the interactive activity which you can play later today and uh, the inks on top are what the illustrations will were before they are what they are now um, that's just a couple of screenshots of the prototype that I built within Figma for my interactive activity um, and some of the, one of the asset folders that I have because there's a lot of assets that I had to make, a lot. Um, and that's it. In the future, I want this to be much bigger. I'm going to have more illustrations, again, a musical EP. Um, maybe more interactive activities, a few animations. I want to put it into comics as well. And that's, that's what I'm all about. So that's my scene. I don't know. Katrina, um, and my project is called Fear of Failure. You can barely, you can barely see it. Um, <laughs> uh, it's an illustration series that portrays my personal experience with feelings of inadequacy and creative paralysis. Um, <coughs> I started the semester with a totally different project, but 
I found myself petrified at the thought of not being able to successfully create what I had envisioned. Um, I was so afraid of the mere possibility of failure that I felt it felt impossible to even try. Um, therefore, I decided to tackle that feeling head on by illustrating it. Um, many people, especially artists and designers, uh, deal with fears and anxieties that are lethal to creativity. And it's my hope that by sharing my own experience, uh, and it, can, it can encourage dialogue and personal reflection surrounding creative fear. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> OK. So I, I guess I just hit next. All right, here. I'm Jet McAdams, and I like board games, and I like card games, I like tabletop games. I made one <laughs> for this project. Yeah, so uh, this is a music-themed card game, and the basic idea is that you're taking uh, ver like various cards that each represent a real-world song, and you're, and you're trying to arrange them into a playlist by um, matching the, the different colored sides and also trying to like collect um, matching symbols as well. So uh, I, I went through multiple drafts, as did everyone else. <laughs> so this is the first one I did. Uh, I just scribbled some stuff on uh, some loose leaf paper and photographed it. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I started working in Illustrator, and, and I made these drafts. Uh, you know, some variations to try to find which one would be a good starting layout. Uh, and I also uh, started, uh, as you can see on the left, I started, um, uh, I, I, like, I quit, like, I briefly considered making up songs for this project, but that would have been tedious <laughs> and unnecessary, so I didn't. Uh, yeah, and I also made some symbols that, you know, that you had to collect, basically. And, uh, yeah, m made s made some variations, uh, ma made some more versions, uh, tinkered around with it. Uh, uh, specifically, e experimented with th with the idea of having the um, gradient be uh, at the bottom of the card so that it's easier to tell which way is right side up. Uh, and then that eventually evolved into my final draft, which looks like this. And uh, I I printed uh, both a previous draft and this draft, and they'll both be at the exhibit. So, and, and, and this is a playable game, and, I'll, and uh, the, I'll teach you the rules when we go to the exhibit. So yeah, uh, what I want to do if, if I had more time, expansion packs, uh, theme cards, which would give bonus points based off specific criteria, same thing for like abilities for each player, and then also a little um, marketplace system where you could buy cards instead of just drawing them out from a deck. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi. My name is Manu. Um, and my capstone project is Boriga Nostalgia, a mobile interactive space fostering intergenerational connections through the exploration of Puerto Rican childhood experiences. In Puerto Rico, there used to be numerous spaces dedicated to children's enjoyment that have since disappeared due to a lack of interest in resources from our government. My project seeks to raise awareness about these special places that I cherished in my youth and share my personal connection and experiences with them. My initiative involves a mo mobile interactive space that focuses on Puerto Rican childhood experiences. It's an intergenerational space designed for adults to reconnect with their inner child and for kids to be kids. Uh, so for my inspiration, La Tiendita, which translates to the market, is one of the many places kids would go to during or after school to get their snacks and candies for really cheap. Um, they used to be in every corner of every town, municipality, and now they barely exist. 
Um, and so I found this girl from back home who revitalized the concept of La Tiendita by creating a mobile pop-up shop where she sells all the snacks and sweets we indulged as children. Her project really inspired me uh, because she did. She not only rekindled nostalgic memories for those who frequent, frequented La Tiendita as children, but also preserved the essence of this cultural institution for younger generations to experience and cherish. I pivoted a lot when it came to the design and arrangement of my display. I wanted to create something that would be informative and educational, but also evoke the nostalgic feelings I get when I think about the things I got to experience when I was growing up in Puerto Rico. And as my capstone project revolves around the display itself rather than the specific product, I tried not to give away too much so you can see for yourselves in tomorrow's show. And so here are some sneak peeks. And <laughs> finally, I'd like to thank Mila Gutierrez, Patricia Cabrera, Daniel Garces, and Adriana Salcedo for staying up late hours, um, doing a lot of labor for me to make this display exactly how I imagined it. And I seriously wouldn't done it without y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Is it on already? <laughs> oh, it's going to die. I'm just going to start the show. Okay. What's up? I'm Kaya. Kaya. <laughs> and for my project, I branded a streetwear fashion brand fashion line. Um, the problem I wanted to tackle was that there a lot of established fashion brands don't really show you the process behind their final pieces or what it took to get to the designs that they come up with. Um, we rarely get to see how some of our favorite pieces came to be. So my way of tackling that was to come up with a brand with, that has a mission to reveal the process behind that, kind of displaying sketches, iterations, um, any type of materials, or all the steps that I, it took for me to get to the final piece. Um, this is a piece of my process, how I show, um, that I was working in a sketchbook, drawing out my ideas. Um, I also used stencils to design my clothing with spray paint, which will be on display on the wall. But um, this is how I got there. And then I just did a bunch of research. I looked at other brands to see how um, I could go about doing mine differently in terms of showing the crowd what they don't normally get to see. Um, I don't have any pictures of my project because they're going to be on the wall, but that's the general idea. That's it. Hello, I am Lila. Um, and this is my project, Meditator. Uh, Meditator is a, an immersive, interactive meditation experience. Um, and I have a brief demo video for you. Um, so as you can see um, above, these are the different features that my AR scene includes. There's um, the option to change the mode from night to day. You can uh, add rain, you can add birds, you can add butterflies, and then there's a few different sound options. Each breath, release all your thoughts. Focus on the way the breath makes you feel. Um, Ground yourself. All right, so <laughs> um, in the age of productivity, it can be difficult to cultivate true mindfulness and relaxation. So with my project, I aim to promote relaxation and mindfulness through augmented reality and projection. And here's a brief sneak peek into my exhibition space that you will get to see with me. Hi, my name is Alma, for those of you guys that don't know me. Um, so my project is called the Gracious Object Photo Project. Um, 
the project objective, what I was trying to solve, an emotion that I'm trying to fulfill is uh, the need to consume. Um, obviously, this is not a problem that I can solve by myself, but um, the first step for me uh, would be a way to celebrate the abundance of ways that our spaces and our things serve us, not as an ins incentive to buy more stuff, but to redefine how we think about the things that we already have and therefore how we take care of them. Um, so my project is a, like a designification of some of the ideas that I um, read in these two books. Uh, this one right here, Braiding Sweetgrass, is like uh, it's like a collection of indigenous stories. And one of the stories goes into like how when we anthropomorphize nature, um, how it's not only like a cultural practice, but a pragmatic one that helps us just innately take better care of our things. When we humanize, when we humanize plants, when we humanize nature, we are more compelled to take care of them. So I did that, but with our things and with our spaces. Uh, and this one is just like about the perversion of consumerism and capitalism and the, all of that. I'm talking really fast <laughs> because we do not have that much time, but that is what's happening. Um, so yeah, my capstone is gonna be like a collection of photographic sets that illustrate the objects and spaces of different people uh, through semi-stage portraiture and still life photography. Um, I'm gonna create an ode to people's things um, with a focus on use, history, and individuality. Um, the process looked a lot like me very humbly asking people within the program and my friends to enter their spaces and get my grimy little hands on all of their favorite things. Um, it was really, really fun. I was nervous at first because it is a really intimate thing, but um, I had a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, behind the scenes, there was a lot of photo editing because uh, there was just a lot of photo editing. <laughs> and yeah, tonight you're gonna see my exhibition, which is gonna be a little recreation of my favorite space, which is my living room. Um, and you're gonna be able to sit in that chair. And it's gonna be fun. That is it. Hi, everyone. So my name is Emma, and this is Voxel, my senior captain project. You may remember that I spoke at the study abroad forum about my study abroad experience, and I kind of touched on my capstone topic, which is basically a continuation of a paper that I did when I was abroad in England about women in art history, especially in contemporary art spaces. I learned about an artist who had a really tragic life story. You can read about her in my book at my exhibit, um, Pauline Bautier. And I wrote a really long paper on this, and it kind of just lit a fire in me in the way that women are represented in art museums, art spaces, galleries throughout art history and contemporary art today. So to do this, I researched and I wrote all of the content inside my zine. Here's my process. I spent probably way too many hours <laughs> to even explain in the zine file. Um, and essentially, I just listed a lot of different women artists that are constantly hailed as forgotten. If you look up any articles of these women from museums like the Tate and contemporary art museums, they constantly label them as, oh, we're doing a forgotten, this is a forgotten woman artist. So I wanted to list all these artists and give them a space that would potentially be a permanent space in art museums or exhibits and galleries where they could be there and constantly be rotating so people could educate themselves on these artists rather than them just being hailed as forgotten and then they get pushed away. So you can see the exhibit once we go to the gallery, but this is just a little sneak peek of my book that I wrote and that I fully designed. Um, the typefaces in this, it is pretty much primarily Mr. Eves, which is a typeface designed by a woman. So that's also a really important design element. But yeah, I'm excited to show you guys. So thank you. <laughs> Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Madison, and my capstone is called Visualis. So today, you know many things, and especially in the live performance industry, DJs especially, but do you know what a VJ is? 
basically, everything's been moving very digital now in town. And this can also translate to the idea of live performance and what plays behind somebody who is singing and performing. So I designed a company that will create one of a kind and unique visual experiences in live time. So my process was making clips in Illustrator and making them move in After Effects and then translating them into a program called VDMX, which is a live video software. Then I adjusted every effect to the MIDI controller you can see on the right, which is controlling how the clips are projected onto the screen. Um, and the next slide is just a couple of compositions that I was able to create. Um, with putting all of these different types of video clips together, I was able to do different type studies to overall turn these old clips into something completely new. And so, for example, someone would hire me to do this for someone's performance. Um, I have a video projected. It has two songs that are mixed together, presented on a wall in the gallery, and I can't wait for you guys to check it out. Hi, my name is Sam. Um, my project is called Closed Loop. It's a sustainable and ethical fashion brand that I handmade and branded. So Closed Loop reimagines the current fashion industry by putting longevity and reusability at the forefront rather than impermanence and disposability. So the problem that I'm tackling is the fact that our current fashion industry operates linearly um, as does our economy, and so I'm aiming to reconstruct the industry with a circular model, keeping clothes um, extending their life cycle. Um, so my research took several different forms, but the inspiration um, at the root of it came back to the anti-capitalist book of fashion um, that basically instilled that previous notion I was talking about. Um, I also took inspiration from ateliers, fashion designers, exhibit designers, um, and tactile zines to drive home my mission of being resourceful and inventive um, and intentional rather than looking for the next thing to buy as we have been trained to do. Um, so my process was all over the place. I had a lot to do. Um, uh, starting with making a brand identity and then a logo. Uh, I made woven labels, hang tags, uh, shopping bags, and then uh, my final zine. Um, so this is a glimpse. It's a little more than a glimpse, as I'm realizing now. Um, but come to the gallery and see the rest. Also, I will be selling my pop-up shop at Future Art Market, so it will be available to purchase in the future. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maria Sanchez, and my capstone project is Madria. It's a stencil type. So I want to create a better system for bilingual design. So I decided to create a type specimen, a type specimen book that also shows off Puerto Rican typography. Here's some of my inspiration. I couldn't fit it all to one slide because it was a lot. Um, and here's a little prototype of my type specimen book. So come to the show and check it out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maggie Bachman. Um, my project is an app called Inklink helps you find the right tattoo. So nobody wants to look like this. <laughs> People get <laughs> tattoos that they later regret or they want a tattoo and don't know what to get. My solution to this problem was to create an app that is meant to help people throughout their tattoo journey. It features a customizable user profile to help match you with artists in your area that specialize in your desired style. It also includes, it includes a gallery of images of different tattoo styles, as well as a camera feature to project those designs onto your skin. 
My main reason for making this project is my lifelong dream of becoming a tattoo artist. Um, above were two of my biggest inspirations of other apps that helped inspire me. One of them projects tattoo designs onto your skin, and one of them helps you find tattoo artists, but they both have a lot of problems, so I tried to solve those. Um, here's my process. Lots of sketches, lots of really bad wireframes. And here's some screens from my final prototype that you guys can come and test at the show tonight. Yeah, that's it. Hey y'all, I'm Joseph, um, and my capstone project is called Addressing Accessibility. Um, and the goal is to bridge the gap between accessibility and aesthetics when it comes to address wayfinding markers. Um, the key issue is that um, addresses are very ubiquitous and required for a lot of services such as postal um, and city services, but oftentimes they're pretty hard to find, especially for people with visual impairments. Um, my approach for this is a ceramic tile design um, focusing on type and accessibility. On the right here you can see some of my type process as well as my production process underneath. Um, and that GIF is just kind of going through um, from the original typeface, which I started with, to my final custom typeface. Um, here are some of my final prototypes, which you'll be able to see at the show. Um, these can be uh, mounted in cement um, on tile backer board or can be drilled into a wall, um, depending on the customer's needs. And then the end caps of the tiles are a modular system, um, which allows for um, enhanced customizability. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm Jada, and the name of my project is called Pink Paper. Um, Pink Paper is a collective I wanted to create. Um, so I created it for the sake of this modern phenomenon of creative fields where people of color, especially in the creative industry, are included. Like there's diversity and inclusion, but the inclusion isn't hidden. Um, when we talk to people, especially creatives who are of color, it's typically a weird feeling of feeling like you're still being singled out. So for my capstone, <coughs> For my capstone, <laughs> I wanted to do the art direction of a promotional short film, um, a brand campaign, and a magazine. Some, some of my inspirations were things like Fairy Tales by Pextra Collins and Alexa Demi, um, the Night Sport ad for Nike, you guys should check that out. Um, these are a lot of campaigns that featured highly graphic elements like style, artistry, and even um, fictitious stories and kind of blending it all together, which is something I wanted to do. My process. If you saw me walking around doing something random, no you didn't. Um, I was filming a lot of random stuff to try to get this feeling of I'm telling a story. Um, these are my iterations of the logo, my storyboards, me filming and art directing and my friends doing free work for me. Love you guys. Um, then for my prototype, I wanted to feature a short little clip, and also that's the cover of the magazine I did. Um, how would I, oh, I can just click it, cool. It's very short, okay. And then do I, oh. And you have to see the rest of the show. <laughs> so you have to see the rest of the show. Hope you enjoy, and thank you all for listening. <clears throat> I think I messed it up. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm Claudia, and 
And for my capstone project, I want to be focusing on culture and connection through sound. So my project is called Garifuna, Sounds of Resistance, and it's about an analog and interactive installation that gives visibility to the reality of one of the most rich, one of the richest group in culture of all Honduras history. So I don't have that much process to show, but I really was inspired by activism and art and kind of mixed them together. So I have a insanely amount of mood boards and sketches, but this was the one that really motivated me the most. And it's all with the purpose of trying to spread awareness of the indigenous group's reality in different Latin American countries. So if you've been in the interactive room the past weeks, you may recognize this. <laughs> um, so this is a digital sketch for my installation where you'll be able to touch and you will create a connection through sound, focusing on environment, language, and music of this amazing culture. Um, and I hope this. <laughs> That's a little of the sounds you'll be able to connect with for my installation. And this is not my, this is close to my final product, but I hope you, you'll be able to interact with more with this culture and yeah, and just l learn more about it. So thank you. All right, hello, my name is Robbie, and my project is Behind the Front, which is a mental health support and awareness campaign for student athletes. So the problem is um, student athletes have standards and expectations placed upon them that are often unrealistic and can lead to levels of stress, sorry, didn't have that mic close to my face, of stress and anxiety that they're not equipped to handle. And in addition, uh, the resources catered towards these student athletes are often uh, insufficient, outdated, and just plain out, just bland and boring. So the inspiration by my project are actually my teammates, friends, family, and myself who have all experienced their own struggles with mental health. And through these struggles, um, I've come to learn those who are close to me have also had their own battles with mental health, and I want to be able to help the future future classes of student athletes with their own struggles and have the resources they need to be able to just power through and just better themselves for the future. My process is very all over the place, which was how my brain felt during this project. Uh, my process began with research into the current mental health resources catered towards student athletes, as well as looking into what others have done and finding other athletes that have become advocates for mental health. Uh, this research turned into pages of notes and ideas that just flooded my sketchbook and eventually made its way onto Illustrator artboards. My solution is a campaign that begins with an Instagram account um, more and more posts are being created, and the more feedback I get from these posts, the more I can help cater to what these student athletes need. Um, an established color palette and typeface designed to easily digest information without overwhelming those seeking to help. The big point was simple and quick forms of information for them to digest without them just seeing black type on a white screen. And providing information and seeing other student athletes viewers can relate to is what the account revol revolves around. Thank you. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for your time and the support. So your QR code is at the library. Yeah, so we are going to go to the gallery now, so, hey.